Good morning everyone, this is Tessie and I thought I would share with you a little bit of what I'm working on today. So today is a full day and we're starting off with harvesting some thyme. Now I have lots of thyme in my garden. I have lemon thyme, lime thyme, rose thyme, German thyme, and very variegated leaf thyme. I'm going ahead and harvesting them. So I will harvest them about three times a year. So I'm cutting that all back because I like to make my own Mrs. Dash seasoning mix. And that I have videos on. I'm gonna show you how to do that today. So what we're doing is we're going to harvest all of our thyme and we're going to dehydrate it and we're going to turn it into a beautiful seasoning that we can have all winter long. What you're looking at here is some of my lemon thyme and some of my German thyme. We're gonna go ahead and harvest all of this. And then I will show you the next step of what we're doing. These herbs have been in the garden for about eight years. So I have quite establishment of these herbs, which gives me plenty to have all year round. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it in the dehydrator. This is London Sunshine Dehydrator. This is a knockoff of the more expensive brands, but I really like this dehydrator because it does fit a lot of trays. We're gonna go ahead and put this all on the dehydrator trays and then we'll work on the next step of making this amazing mix. All right, it took about five hours and now what we do is we put it in a little colander like this and then this is how I do it. I just run my hands through it and all the sticks and stems stay in the colander and then all the really nice loose thyme will go into the big dish pan right here. So we're gonna do this, this takes a little while to do it and then I'll show you what I add to it next. Now what I like to add is different seasonings. I will add some oregano to some of it. This time I'm just gonna keep it as thyme and some onions. So let me go ahead and show you the dehydrated onions that we put in with it. And then we just mix it all around. Really, you can use this seasoning for everything. And you can change it. You know, every time I make it, I make it a little bit different. So all I have here is some dehydrated onion, and that's the thyme and onions. And now this will last me all winter long. I find the best way to open a number 10 can is just with a manual can opener. It's a little hard on the wrist. It takes a little, <laughs> takes a little bit to open them, but this by far has been the easiest. I've tried so many ways of trying to open these big cans up. And this one, well, this one works the best. I do save my cans because I use these as flower planters. So I will be saving my cans here. All you have to do is take a nail and a hammer at the bottom of it and poke some holes through it. Make sure you wash your lid first because the lids can be very dusty from being sitting on the shelves at the grocery store. Ooh, may I? That is a workout. All right, everyone, so what I am doing is canning some cheese. All that I do is I take the cheese out of the tin can, and that is cold, and I just put it into the jars like this. I'm adding about a tablespoon of some amazing pepper jelly that a local Amish woman made that I absolutely love it. So this is hot tomato jelly, hot pepper jelly, but it's not very hot but it's called hot pepper jelly. And I added a tablespoon of this to the cheese. And let me tell you what, it is probably one of the best things that I have ever made. And now what I'm going to do is, 
I am going to put the lids on this and I'm going to pressure can this for 30 minutes. So this is canning cheese. It is not USDA regulated, but I feel safe in doing it because I'm pressure canning it. Now there are many recipes out there where people water bath can it and it, that's something you're interested in. You can look that up, but I feel really safe in pressure canning everything. So while it's not USDA regulated or approved of, because I'm pressure canning it, I do feel rather safe in using it this way. All right, let's get this finished. While I'm waiting for the pressure canner to vent, I thought it'd be a good opportunity to get a few chores done, get this all finished, and that way I am done for the day. And then by then, the pressure canner will be ready to pressure can all of the cheese. The 30 minutes are up and then I wait an additional 10 minutes to make sure the pressure canner has gone down the pressure. What you see I'm using is store-bought jelly jars. Now in other words, these are jars that had jelly in them from the grocery store. I reuse these over and over again and they always seal so nicely. That's why these jars look different than ones you would find through Amazon or places like that. I have lots of friends and family who saved me these jars because they are perfect for my cheese whiz. So I call it cheese whiz, but basically it's prepared cheese sauce. It's a nacho, nacho cheese sauce, which is processed. So it is not necessarily 100% real cheese, but we love having it with our meals in casseroles and all kinds of things like that. A tablespoon of that in two cups of rice and it's absolutely amazing and it's very cheap as well. One number 10 can on Walmart is $9.95. Sometimes I can get it at the discount grocery store for $5. As you see, it's a lot cheaper that way than buying it in the store. If you're interested in the full tutorial of canning this cheese, I will share with you the link and the i-card at the end of this video. I like to prefer to let my jars sit for 24 hours before I move them just to make sure the seal stays sealed. Now what I like to do is I put these jars in the refrigerator. Now these jars in the refrigerator, I have a second refrigerator. The reason why I do that is it's just another safety precaution. The reason why I like to do it this way is many reasons. Number one is a number 10 can is cheaper than the smaller ones. A number 10 can will not last very long in the refrigerator once you open it. This way you can have it last for a long time. This is good for over a year to a year and a half in the refrigerator, but of course within six months we always have it consumed. But this is shelf stable. It's just I put it in the refrigerator because I have the room and because it is a cheese product, I like to have that safety of keeping it at below 40 degrees. Thanks for watching the video and I can't wait to share you again tomorrow what we're working on.